The pattern of exam is 40 marks, you all know. So, we have total in practicals 40 marks. Out of this, 10 marks is for viva, which will happen in the afternoon. So, two weeks, four examiners, we have 2.5 marks, so 10 in week. Followed by clinical social case. Clinical social case. One case, 12 marks. This has a major uh, jump. Then you have exercise. Two exercise, four marks each, so eight marks. Spotters, five spotters, one mark each. We give five marks. We have asking. One mark each, five to five. So totally we have 40 marks in practical. So out of which we have this 22 marks more of a subjective to examiner. So examiner decides the way how to present, how you uh, perform in the exams. So these are all, this has a, this has a only knowledge component. Out of which this 8 marks will have a proper key that is you get you will get 100% full marks. So that is why in this class we are going to see about exercise. Okay, so we, uh, we have uh, selected, uh, we have selected about uh, uh, 7 set of uh, problems. Uh, and, uh, and in the end of the class, I will explain about what are the uh, problems we have missed. So, we all will uh, discuss about the formulas of each uh, exercise. So, we have first in statistics. Statistics, we have mean, median, more, calculations, then range, standard deviation calculation. Okay, so this is these are all measures of central tendency. These are all measures of central tendency. These two are measures of dispersion. That is in the set of values how all the values have clumped together towards the central value that is called a central tendency that is expressed by mean, median and mode and this is the range how the values are dispersed are variable uh, are one variable is uh, varying with each other so that is called as range and uh, standard deviation so it is given by a formula mean is otherwise called as average so which is equal to sum of all observations divided by total number of observations that is your mean median is the central value it is otherwise called as the central value so you have to assign all the list of values or in, in, uh, arrange the values in either ascending order or in the descending order then you have to find the middle value. If, if the total number of values are in odd number, then it will be easy. Suppose, for example, five number values are there, means third value will be the middle value. So, to calculate that, you have n plus 1 by 2 values called as median. So, if, if you have 10 numbers, that is even number of uh, values, then you have to calculate the average between 5th and the 6th value. So that is the median. Mode is most number of repeated observations. Mode is always called as repeated value. So these three are the measures of central tendency. Measures of central tendency and uh, measures of dispersion we, we have range. Which is given by the formula maximum value minus minimum value. So this indicates how the values are spread from 
uh, one uh, one end to the other end. So this is called range. Then we have standard deviation. Standard deviation is given by the formula root of sigma x minus x bar the whole square divided by n minus 1. This n minus 1 is there if the values are less than 30 samples. If it is more than 30 samples, then you can just keep it as n instead of n minus 1. So the formula is given by x minus x bar. So whenever it pushes x, x, bar, x bar is nothing but your mean. So mean is otherwise called as x bar. So here in standard deviation, we have to uh, we have to calculate, we have to put a table. We have to put the first serial number. If suppose we have five values means, we have to put up serial numbers like this. Then the particular value, suppose we have 3, 4, 5, 7, 8 like that means, then we have to calculate the average, that is V. Then we have to calculate x minus x bar. Then x minus x bar the whole square. Then we have to sum up it. This will give sigma x minus x bar the whole square. When you divide it by 5, this is called as variance. This is called as variance. And when you take the square root of variance, it will give standard deviation. Okay, so uh, this is called standard deviation. Okay, now we have seen the measures of central tendency, measures of central tendency, and measures of uh, dispersion. Now from this we can uh, calculate some more. That is standard error. Standard error is given by the formula standard deviation divided by root of n. Where S D is called a standard deviation and root of n is the, uh, n is the sample size. So from this is the standard error, standard error of mean. This is standard error of mean. When you are calculating confidence interval, confidence interval, which is nothing but mean plus or minus two standard error. So you will calculate standard deviation, from here you will calculate standard error, from here you will derive this confidence interval that is nothing but mean plus or minus two standard error. Then you can calculate coefficient of variation. Coefficient of variation that is given by the formula standard deviation divided by mean into 100. Coefficient of variation is expressed in percentage. Standard deviation by mean into 100. So, in this uh, uh, problem, we have uh, explained about measures of central tendency that is mean, median, and more. Mean is the average, median is the Central value, mode is the most repeated uh, number. Dispersion is range, which is maximum minus minimum value. Standard deviation is given by the formula root of x minus sigma x minus x bar the whole square divided by n minus 1 if the sample is uh, 30. If it is more than 30, it is just the n. So, we will, uh, for calculation of standard deviation, we have put a table like this. Uh, the uh, values calculate mean. Uh, x, uh, x minus uh, x bar, sigma x minus x bar is otherwise called as mean deviation. It is otherwise called as mean deviation. So, from mean, median, mode, and range and standard deviation, what you can derive or calculate is mean deviation, standard error of mean, which is given by the formula standard deviation uh, divided by root of n, confidence flow, and coefficient of variation. How long do you see about mean, median, mode? Uh, that is message of central tendency uh, and uh, range of standard deviation that are the message of dispersion. So, uh, we can derive mean deviation that is sigma x minus x bar uh, divided by n that is called as the mean deviation. The, uh, then standard error of mean that is standard deviation by root of n, confidence interval which is mean uh, plus or minus uh, 2 standard error. Coefficient of variation is given by the formula standard deviation by mean into 100. So, these four things mean standard error, co confidence interval, coefficient of variation. These four things are, are all uh, extra with, uh, things which you can derive from this commonly asked uh, measures of central tendency and dispersion. Thank you. Now, we will move on to the uh, next problem that is. 
Now the second problem is about the tests of significance. So tests of significance. Test of significance. The commonly used test of significance is chi-square test. The commonly used test of significance is chi-square test. So we have four steps in this. First and foremost uh, step in uh, chi-square test is you are uh, defining the hypothesis. Defining the hypothesis. Then second is calculation of chi-square value. Third is calculation of degree of freedom. Fourth is probability values. Finding the probability values. So we have these four important steps in the calculation of uh, uh, chi-square test. So why chi-square test is needed is to prove the association. So we have to see whether uh, the association is real or not. So that we will prove at the end of the test. If the p value is less than 0 0.05, then we call it as significant. So for that we need to say the hypothesis which two variables you are associating. Usually, you have to define the alternate hypothesis and the null hypothesis. Alternate hypothesis always says there is some association. There is association. Whereas, your null hypothesis says there is no association. Null means nothing. So, there is no association. Suppose smoking, lung cancer you have patients like this, smoking you have like this, you randomly get patients like this with uh, 50, 20, 30, uh, 40. There. Patients are uh, uh, spread uh, in these four groups uh, randomly. So you want to say if there is association, that is your alternate hypothesis. If there is no association, then that is uh, called as your uh, if uh, then that is called as null hypothesis. So you have to mention what is your hypothesis. That is the first step in chi-square test. Then you have to calculate the chi-square value. Chi-square value is given uh, is calculated by the formula sigma observed minus expected divided by expected. Put it in the problem. Where is the name of the sand there? Where is the name of the sand there? Yeah, yeah. Where is the name of the So, the second step is calculating the chi square value. Chi square value is given by the formula sigma observed minus expected, the whole square divided by expected. So, like how we put a table for uh, standard deviation, we have to put a table here also. We have to assume this is A, B, C, B. So, A, B, C, B. So, what, what is this observed value and expected value? Observed value is just what you got. Expected value, if there is no difference, what would have been the value then? So, that is calculated usually by row total into column total divided by grand total. So, expected formula for expected value is row total into column total column total divided by grand total. So, we have to calculate expected values for all of these cells. So, for example, in this case, it will be For, for example, in this case, A will be uh, 90 into 80 divided by 140. Like that, all the four values we have to calculate. 
then we have to put the observed value then observed minus expected observed minus expected the whole square uh, then observed minus expected the whole square divided by e sum in observed minus expected whole square divided by e this value is called as your chi square value this is the second step in chi square analysis then third step is degree of freedom what is degree of freedom is if you have this cell values already prefixed only one value put up here will automatically fill all the values here so uh, so this is calculated by the formula rho minus 1 into column minus 1 So we have two rows here, two minus one into all of minus one. So row degree of freedom here is one. So in exams, most commonly you will get only two mark to, uh, to table. So that degree of freedom will be one. Uh, if in case it is three by three means, then it will be four. Three by two, three by two means three minus one into two minus one, which will give you two. Degree of freedom will be two. So here most commonly you will do exams. You will get one. Then after getting uh, this calculated this degree of freedom and getting this chi square value, we have to look at the probability table for the p value. But sometimes this table may be provided. The most commonly when two by two table is given for you, we may not provide probability table. So you have to memorize this number of three point eight four. When when the chi square value is greater than three point eight four for degree of freedom one, then p value will be less than zero point zero five. This you have to remember this number for p value for degree of freedom one. When the chi square value is greater than three point eight four, or otherwise in any two by two table. You get chi square value greater than three point eight four, then the p value is going to be less than zero point zero five. P value less than zero point zero five indicates that there is a significant, significant association between your thing. So in that case, if p value is less than zero point zero five, then you will reject null hypothesis. If p value is less than zero point zero five, then take null hypothesis. If greater than zero point zero five, then accept null hypothesis. So this is the first test of significance we use. That is the chi-square test. Then we are moving into uh, standard error of uh, mean and standard error of proportion calculation. Now the third problem, which is the standard error of difference between proportion and mean. Between proportion and mean. Example here is. Uh, Hemoglobin level among boys is 10 grams, girls is 9 grams. So this is the mean hemoglobin level among uh, boys and girls. Then the question here is, I go this here is, is this difference significantly different or not? Same way, the, pro the proportion means the percentage of uh, or prevalence of anemia among boys is 13 percentage. Uh, girls it is 15 percentage. There is a difference of 2 percentage. Is this 2 percentage significant or not? So this is the answer question. So based on this, we have to formulate the hypothesis first. As we did in, as we did in uh, chi square test. So now this is our hypothesis. From this, we are going to calculate the z value, which is given by the formula actual difference. Divided by the standard error of standard error of difference between two means. 
means are proportions so now i am just going to focus only on proportions just to deal with one at a time so in this case you can find out the actual difference easily as two so you can just substitute the actual difference between the mean hemoglobin of these two things what you need to calculate is standard error of difference between proportions this is given by the formula standard error of uh, difference between the two means is given by the formula for proportions it is given as root of p1 that is uh, prevalence in the first group q1 divided by n uh, n1 plus p2 into q2 divided by n2 so this is the formula so here i want to mention the word what is q p is your prevalence in, in this case it will be 13 percent 13 whereas q is 100 minus p which will be 87 Where number of boys will be number of boys uh, number of boys will be here the n one the same way you will write it for q two here for girls then you calculate the particular value then put the and again substitute here then you calculate the particular z value like how we said in chi square three point eight four is the magical number here the magical number is one point nine six if the number is more than one point nine six If the number is more than 1.96, then you say there is a significant difference. That is, p value will be less than 0.05. So this is for the proportion. For the means, what is the difference here? Is for the means, instead of p1 prevalence and p1, you substitute the formula with standard deviation of the first thing. Here, the standard deviation of the second degree. You calculate the same way. Uh, calculate the same way because P one and P one we multiply here. It is a standard deviation square of one and standard deviation square of two. So then we calculate the value of standard error of uh, uh, difference between the two means. Then substitute here. Then you calculate the P value. The magic number here is one point nine six for difference between two means. So that this is your number is the, the number you have to remember. So that is about the third problem. Uh, significant uh, standard error of difference between two means or proportions. Now the fourth one is about uh, chlorination of uh, milk. About chlorination of milk. Here we have three important steps. One is the calculation of volume of the water, water level. Two is your amount of bleaching powder needed. Amount of bleaching powder needed. Fourth is the procedure to mix. This is. Full theory standard, which I will uh, tell you uh, later. So calculation of uh, volume of the water. So now the first step is calculation of water. We have different. Uh, so the first step in uh, uh, the chlorination of milk is the calculation of the volume of the water. Here the most important thing is you are calculating the Volume of the water, not the volume of the milk. So you have to be very careful in assessing the water level, not the uh, entire volume of the milk. So there are maybe two, uh, three different types of milks. That is uh, cylindrical, cylindrical, rectangular, and conical. Conical are very conical will be very rare, but in case they ask, you have to answer. So cylindrical milk is given by the formula. Pi r square x, where r is the radius, pi is equal to twenty two by seven r three point one four. Height is the height of the water level, water level, not the 
width is height. Then rectangular means length into breadth into height. Then polygon means 1 by 3 pi r square times. So this is about the calculation of the volume of the water level. Then the second step is amount of bleaching powder needed. So here we use the horns of water, which, which consists of 6 cups. And we add uh, uh, 1 drop of the stock solution here, 2 drops, 3 drops, 4 drops, 5 drops, 6 drops. So in the third cup turns to, which means you need 6 grams of bleaching powder, bleaching powder to disinfect 455 liters of water. Here you can ask why it is 455. 455 is nothing but your 1 gallon. 1 gallon of water. So that is, you need, if the third cup of uh, hard separatus turns uh, the color, uh, turns into blue color, then that, that indicates that that only chlorine appears. So 6 grams uh, of bleaching powder is needed to disinfect 4 liters of water. So this is the basic uh, principle. So based on this, we need to calculate the uh, same. So it is given by the formula amount of the bleaching powder. Here you need not only about the percentage of the bleaching powder because hard separatus does not take into consideration. You are testing with the hard separatus with the bleaching powder and with the water you are going to do the disinfection. So you don't want to worry about the percentage of chlorine which is present in the bleaching powder. So amount of uh, bleaching powder added, uh, uh, bleaching powder added uh, uh, needed to disinfect is the volume of the water 2 into which cup, number of cup, which is uh, turning the color divided by 455. With this formula, you will get this thing. So, in, in this calculation volume, you have to understand uh, one thing, it will be in meter cube, which is equal to 1000 liters. So, whenever you get these values, you get in meter cube, you have to multiply it 1000 liters. So, when you substitute the uh, volume here into 2 into 2 into suppose it is 3 means then you will get the number of grams of each powder needed to disinfect the water. This is the second step. Then the third step as I said it is going to be the theory. So what you should do is you should take a bucket 100 grams of each powder cannot be added in the same bucket. So not more than 100 grams of each powder. You have to, uh, you have to put the each powder then put water, make it into a paste, then add water up to two thirds of the bucket, then remove this alum, the, the, this your lime. So, this water is nothing but gal, chlorinated lime, that is CaO.Cl2. So, you have to remove this CaO. If you don't remove this CaO, when it goes into the well, it will again come and form bleaching water and it will not evaporate. Free growing. So for that, this is the steps. These are all the steps. Uh, so you need to paste and remove this line. Remove this line, and only the superheated solution should be added. You have to tie it to a rope, insert it to the middle, agitate vertically, horizontally. Then you have to ask the uh, people to wait for one hour. So this is the uh, time required for the action of growing to happen. Then only you can ask the people to uh, start consuming the water for drinking purposes. So if suppose I said it is 100 grams, so if your uh, total of the sea is 200 grams means, then you have to do it twice. The same procedure twice and ask the person uh, to wait for one hour, then uh, they, they can consume the water. And, uh, now the fifth problem is about two borrowed tables. Our contingency table we say. So with the two borrowed table we have three different types of uh, problems. One is for case control studies. One is for cohort studies. Here screening calculations. That is your. Uh, Diagnostic test calculations. So, 
in two more tables we have two important rules that, that is always this is should be on the top the exposure should be on the column side second rule is always think positive first so we have to put positive first negative second positive first negative second so i have mentioned two rules that is this should be on the top and column should be filled with the exposure exposure here outcome there so this is the basic law for a two word table in case control study so if you uh, can uh, make this table perfectly then half of the calculations are done so here we get the particular values a b c d we say in case control study you you can calculate odds ratio odds is nothing but your chance of disease so uh, odds is given by the odds of odds ratio is given by the formula a d by b c so a d by b c is otherwise called as cross product ratio cross product ratio that is the cross product ratio a d by b c so with this 75% of the problem is over then what is the rest of the percentage is you have to write the interpretation properly so here in, in inter uh, interpretation the only difference between case control study and cohort study is this. the similar measure what you get there is relative risk what relative risk say is if suppose you smoke you get you have eight times more chance of getting a lung cancer but in odds ratio you say in uh, lung among lung cancer patients being a smoker will be eight times more so it is a retrospective study so we have we have to be very careful in that interpretation so that is about case control study then second is your cohort study the same rule applies there also this is uh, the outcome should be on the top exposure should be here always be positive so you have values like this a b c d what you can calculate is incidence that is incidence among the exposed these are all the exposed group here you can calculate that this is the exposed group incidence among the exposed is a by a plus b incidence among exposed incidence among unexposed is C by C plus D. This is incidence. Now, relative risk is given by the formula. Incidence of incidence among exposed divided by incidence among unexposed. So the interpretation again here is for a smoker, a smoker and lung cancer. Being a smoker, eight times if the relative risk is eight, then you have to say. Being a smoker is eight times more chance of uh, for getting a lung cancer. So that is the relative risk interpretation. Then we we can calculate two more uh, values here. That is attributable risk, attributable risk, and population attributable risk. The basic difference here is population attributable risk is. If suppose I remove smoking from this community, how much amount of lung cancer can be prevented? Attributable risk is how much amount of lung cancer is directly attributed due to smoking. So that is that is that is the thing. It is given by the formula: incidence among exposed divided by incidence among unexposed divided by incidence among exposed. For population attributable risk, it is given by the formula: incidence among the total population. Minus incidence among unexposed divided by incidence among the population. So this, all these three relative risk, attributable risk, population risk, and unexposed interpretation, we have seen. Then the last one is your screening. Screening, as I said, this is here. It is not the outcome here. You have to mention it with gold standard. Gold standard. Then the test, whatever the test says or not. So positive, positive, negative, negative. 
This is called as true positive. The test says positive. Actually, there is this is true positive. This is true negative. This is falsely positive. This is falsely negative. Now you you can calculate four values from here. One is sensitivity, specificity, positive predictive value, negative predictive value. So how to remember this formula is very simple. Uh, uh, from here A B C D, but in book it is given as A B C D. I am not using here the formula because in the, in the, Good for you to remember the formulas. For predictive value, if it is positive predictive values, all P's will be there. Positive predictive value, all P's. There are two P's here P P and F P, P P by F P. Negative predictive value means all the negatives will be there. In all of these formulas, true will be on the top. Always remember, true will be on the top. So all these four formulas truth will be on the top. So this is given by the formula. So what it means is negative predictive value is out of the total predicted negative. How many are truly negative? Out of the totally predicted positive, how many are truly positive? That is the predictive values of positives and negatives. Then we, we have specificity and sensitivity. Sensitivity you have to remember in this way. Positivity among diseases. Sensitivity is positivity among diseases. Specificity is negativity among health. If you remember this phrase properly, sensitivity is positivity among diseases. Specificity is negativity among health. So who are the positives? I said true will be always on the top, here true to negative will be on the top. So positivity plus false negative. These are all the true in the disease. This is true negative plus false positive. As I said here, it will be exactly the same. For positive predictive value, all P's will be here. For negative predictive value, all N's will be here. Here, if it is positively among disease, you can easily uh, do this. And it will be the exact opposite of this. This two will be the exact opposite. So this is the sensitivity and specificity. The test which is good has good sensitivity is used as the screening test. The test which has good specificity is used as the confirmatory test. So here the fourth letter is the P here. You can remember this way. Sensitivity means this is for screening. Fourth letter is the decoding here. Specifically, fourth letter is confirmatory. So, in your interpretation, if you have values of screen uh, sensitivity and specificity, then you can mention whether it can be the test can be used as a confirmatory test or a screening test easily. Thank you. Okay, now this is the sixth uh, sixth group. Indicators. Indicators you can divide into morbidity, morbidity, mortality. This uh, mortality followed by fertility and MCH care indicators, maternal and child care indicators. Then malaria and malaria indicators. These are just formulas. You have to uh, know the definition of that particular uh, uh, word, then uh, express it in uh, percentage of thousand or lakh that like you have to understand. So, morbidity, morbidity is we can uh, divide it into incidence and prevalence. This, this will be again, it will be called as rate. So, whenever you mention rate, you have to mention the period, specific time, what, what time it is. Under incident rate, the normally used are uh, incidents, attack rates, 
secondary attack rate. Secondary attack rate. Incidence is given by the formula total number of new cases divided by total population. Or the population at this time. You can say total population into 100, usually expressed in percentage, sometimes it will be in thousands. If the incidence is very less in decimals, less than 1, they mention it per thousand or per 10,000 population. But whatever it is, you have to mention the incidence rate per thousand population in that year. So there are three important components, not only this value, but also the other two are thousand, that is thousand population and per year, that is also very important. Then you have attack rate. Attack rate is same as your incidence. Only thing is in the denominator, here the total number of cases, only the other thing is this total population during epidemics outbreaks, that is during outbreaks. Risk, population and risk. These two are the important thing in the attack rate. Then secondary attack rate is total number of new cases divided by total population at risk within one, one incubation period. Within one incubation period. This is called secondary attack rate. This uh, secondary attack rate, uh, as the secondary attack rate in, uh, increases, the infertility of the degree, uh, disease increases. As for example, your chicken box, measles and all, we have about 85 to 90% of secondary attack rate, which means over exposed to that particular disease will get the disease, uh, eight, that is 85 to 90% chance of time, the person will get the disease, that is the secondary attack rate. These are all excellent rates. And prevalence rate we have period prevalence and point prevalence. Point prevalence, period over the year, this is 2018 means January to December, some would have uh, 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 been suffered with the tuberculosis recovered. The new cases will come and go. So if you map all these things and measure that is called as period prevalence. And if you at a particular point of time in the month of October, how many disease, how many cases are there? This is called as point prevalence. Whereas the cases uh, uh, which is present will be January and uh, December will be considered as period prevalence. Prevalence also will be commonly uh, uh, expressed in uh, percentage, uh, which means your denominator is per hundred population. And uh, this is just like uh, HIV and very rare diseases. You can express it per thousand population or ten thousand uh, and so on. So that is about your mortality indicators. And coming to the uh, mortality indicators, we have the common, uh, the first and foremost is your crude death rate. Is it, it is called a crude death rate because, like your crude oil, you have to, it, it, it is compared, uh, it is comprising a part of diesel petrol like that. Crude, this is crude because it has total number of deaths, total number of deaths divided by total population into thousand. So uh, in this indicators, you, sh you should always mention about the population per thousand population and the time. That is very important. So this is total number of deaths. If it is replaced with births, then that is called as crude birth rate. Crude birth rate is an indicator of fertility. What are the other indicators of mortality? You have case fatality rate, proportional mortality rate, cost specific death rate. Cost specific death rate, age specific death rate, gender specific death rate and all is there. You have to be very careful about these uh, indicators. 
uh, numerators and denominators. For case under theory, the denominator is total number of cases. Numerator is total number of deaths due to the disease. This secondary attack rate is called as the spreading power of the disease. That is the infective power, how fast this disease will spread. Whereas the CFR is called as killing power of the disease, which is out of how many cases, how many will die. So this is always expressed in 100. So which means a disease with 100 percent fatality means all the cases will die. The examples will be rabies, uh, etc. So that is about the case fatality rate. So proportional mortality rate means out of the total, as the name indicates, it is called the proportional mortality rate. Out of the total number of deaths, how many are due to the particular disease? Which means total number of deaths due to the disease. So this means tuberculosis proportional mortality rate is in this area out of 100 deaths, 10 deaths will be due to tuberculosis. So that is that is also expressed in 100. Then cost specific, again uh, cost specific means here instead of total number of deaths, it will be total population. Total population at this death due to DTB. Like that, if you have a particular age, deaths in that age, deaths in that age divided by uh, total number of people in that age is called as age specific. Gender specific is the total population in that age, in that gender, deaths in that gender. This is called as gender specific death rate. So, these are all indicators of mortality. From here we are moving to indicators of fertility or also the MCH gap. So first and foremost is your CDF, that is food birth rate. As the name indicates it is food, it is given by the formula total number of live births. Total number of live births divided by total number of total population. All this total population will be median population. Mid-year population. So this is crude birth rate. To understand the other indicators of fertility and uh, uh, MCH care, you should understand what is mean by abortion, what is mean by stillbirth, what is mean by neonate, what is mean by infant. So, in this picture, this is a picture given in mark. This is the point of delivery. This is the point of delivery. If the child is alive, at this point, then that will be considered as childbirth. If the child dies any point of time, 28 weeks later, then that period is called as still birth rate. That, that, that birth, that uh, the deaths are called as uh, stillbirths. How, how do we calculate this 28 weeks? We can ask the patients uh, what is the height of the, uh, we can measure the height of the baby if it is 1000 grams and uh, sorry, weight 1000 grams, height if it is more than 35 centimeter, then we conclude this 28 weeks. And any any death less than this 28 weeks will be considered as abortion. Abortion. So abortion, this is called as abortion, this is called as still birth rate. So all the uh, births at this point of time will be considered as life births. Then the children who does not celebrate their first birthday will be considered is called as infant mortality rate that is the deaths before one year of age that will be called as infants they are called as infants then 
within one month they are called as neonates neonates one month it is called as neonates in one month we have two categories which is one week and uh, second to fourth week this is called as early neonatal period this is called as late neonatal period and this period that is from after one month to one year it is called as post neonatal period and you should not have the confusion between this late neonatal period and post neonatal period sometimes they will give infant infant mortality that is less uh, for one year early they will give post they will give you have they last to carry it late so you can subscribe and uh, carry it then the deaths within 5 years of age this is called under 5 deaths so roughly we can say about 75 to 85% of the amplified deaths will happen within one year will happen within one year out of 75% to 80% of the deaths of infants will happen within one month of their life and out of the neonatal deaths 75 to 80% will always happen within one month of their life and out of the neonatal deaths 75 to 80% will always happen within what we call this thing so what for for this for the you have to understand the fact uh, when do you say the uh, uh, child is new uh, name infant under five leg so here we can calculate abortion rate all of these indicators we have denominators as live birth except for your still birth and perinatal mortality rate which has both live births and still births also so all these indicators have denominators as live births and all these indicators are expressed in thousand live births okay so now what are the possible here we can put it in the board so abortion rate abortion rate this total number of abortion divided by total number of live births into thousand still birth rate total number of still births divided by sorry for the uh, abortion rate it is a live birth only for still birth rate it is live births plus still births into thousand for perinatal mortality rate why this perinatal mortality rate is the, uh, important is because it takes into account of both the pediatric care which uh, which is given after one week of the delivery and the obstetric care which is given before the labor so any uh, uh, change in this period uh, postnatal to moderate uh, sorry perinatal mortality rate indicates the uh, healthcare delivery how to uh, pediatric and uh, obstetric uh, departments are going so this perinatal mortality rate compares this both so here we will uh, numerator will be still birth plus early neonatal neonatal deaths divided by live births plus still births into thousand then you can calculate early neonatal deaths uh, death rate late neonatal death rate neonatal death rate infant mortality rate under 5 mortality rate all these things we have numerators as per the definition and live births into thousand this thing so whenever you write this thing you have to, uh, the answer you have to write 75 under 5 deaths per thousand pop Like this, you are doing. So the opposite of under minus under five under five rate is called as child survival rate. Child survival rate is otherwise called as the third reverse of 
underflying mortality rate. So these are all the possible MCHR indicators. Now malaria and filaria indicators. So for malaria we have annual blood examination rate. A B E R we say that is annual annual blood examination rate. So in out of the total population, how many blood examinations are done? This is called annual blood examination rate. This is expressed in percentage. You have one next indicator that is slight positivity rate. For slight positivity rate, you have out of the total blood examined, how many are slight positives? Again, you express this in percentage. Now we have API. That is annual parasite incidence. Here we combine these two and we say out of the uh, total population, how many are slight positive? This is expressed in thousand. So the cutoff for APA is given as two. So based on this, the highest areas of malaria are being highest areas of malaria are being classified. So these three are very important. If you replace this slight positivity with false value, see this positive will show all the malaria positive. If you look at only the false value, then that will become slight false value. If the same way, instead of slight positives, you put slight positives for false value, then that will be called as annual false value index. So, this is about malaria. Now, one more which is left out is the filaria. We have filaria endemicity rate. Filaria endemicity rate. Then filaria, microfilaria rate. Then the last one, this is filaria disease rate. So these three are the important ones. So for uh, uh, here the denominator is for all these things total number of people examined. How many slight positives? That is your microfilaria. How many clinically symptomatic filaria are present? That will be your filaria intensity rate. Sorry, filaria disease rate. Combining these two, it will become filaria epidemic rate. So the disease rate means disease should be uh, exhibited. Microfilaria scale positive should be there. Filaria epidemic means both of these combined. And this is expressed in 100 and 1000. 100. That is in percentage. So, in, in all these indicators, we should mention the unit, you get your final number as the x means, you have to say per uh, 100 population, 1000 population in year. So, whenever you mention this denominator and uh, the time, then only it will be called as rate. Okay, now we have, to, we have missed out one more important uh, indicator called the maternal mortality ratio, the MMR, which is defined as the total number of maternal deaths, maternal deaths divided by total number of live births. This is always in first previously expressed in thousand. 
Now it is uh, in, for the past 15 years, it is expressed in one lakh. This thing. So whatever maternal mortality rate is mentioned, you have to say 150 maternal deaths per one lakh drivers in that year, in year 2018. Right? That you have mentioned. So what is maternal death here? Any matter, any death which is due, to, which is arise, which have arise due to the complications of pregnancy, delivery, and postpartum period within 42 days. This is defined as maternal death. This is called as maternal mortality ratio. Now then, what is maternal mortality rate? Rate you replace because maternal deaths are compared with life uh, uh, it is called as ratio you replace the total number of reproductive age group woman age group woman here it will become maternal mortality rate so with this we are concluding this uh, indicators so uh, in this uh, in this class we have seen about uh, six uh, uh, set of problems which will be commonly encountered we have missed a uh, few in this uh, problems that is your uh, t test we have not covered about t test which in uh, some uh, colleges they may have in their problem set so you can uh, add a t test then they will give the water report what are the reports to you and they will ask you to infer how, uh, what are the modifications, what will you recommend. And uh, that is, uh, I will write here, T-test is missed, T-test is missed, then what are the quality interpretation is missed, prescription of a diet for a normal woman, adult uh, woman, uh, pregnant woman, like that, that will be there, that is missed. Then uh, they will do an outbreak investigation, outbreak situation, and what measures you can take. This and all will be given in epidemiological exercises. So you can read out this, this will be a more theory. There won't be any farmers in this. So you can read out this thing. Thank you.